had a bit of a moment there, a bit of a grey moment. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you be in the world. I'm Steve Hay, this is Woodworking Masterclass, and welcome to the workbench. And I'm just looking at myself there, and I'm not in the centre of the screen, so I'm going to have to just move that camera a bit. It's easier to do that than move myself. So, wait a moment, and we'll see how we go. Whoop. Hopefully, that's going to be better. Oh, dear. That's much more better. -er. That's good. How we go? Oh, look at these people in the house already. Jared, welcome. Max, as always. Desk, Deskrout, is that it? Deskrout? Deskrout? Well, welcome anyway. Uh, Michael, g'day, mate. How are you? Chad? Oh dear, oh dear, it's all happening. Now Bob's not down here at the moment, but he'll soon figure out that it's Monday. And I expect him to open that door at any second and make a pest of himself, which he will. Uh, Rodan, Rodan and Andrew, Andrew, good day. The first death route was the most great. Well, cheers, death route, thank you for that. Welcome to, what have we got? Oh, we're all over the place. Yeah, Ewan, you made it. Well, mate, thank you. Ewan, I'm just going to, I don't mean to embarrass you, but they won't know you if you jump in the street and they bumped into you. Ewan just sent me a message on Facebook. I think it's the same one. <laughs> Not Facebook, on YouTube, and I answered it. And uh, I said, join the live stream if you want. And there you go, isn't that wonderful? Oh, just Andrew. right? Oh, Andrew, gotcha. That's easy peasy. I've got a lot of things happening today. <clears throat> My voice is starting to go and I've just started. Where's my water? Where? Here we go. Oh dear. I have, I have started, I have started turning the, um, what do you call it? The posts for the bed. And uh, I've got a few things I've got to do. Let me just have a look at this. I don't think you want to be looking at that. You'd much prefer to be looking <laughs> at a glass of water. No, maybe not. All right. Uh, I don't know if you remember the last stream, I was gluing some pieces of ebony and coachwood together. This is what it ended up being. There you go. Whoops. So it takes a bit to get all this symmetrical, so I'm going to work on that. But in theory, it works. So you just laminate um, veneer and timber together, and then you can turn it, and you get almost like making your own spalting, isn't it? So that was that's something we'll do later on. I'm doing another one with diamonds in it to see how that works. And I also learned when I'm laminating things up that I'm going to turn, don't use hide glue. Use the PVA because hide glue has no give in it whatsoever. So there you go. Well, Steve from UK. Well, I'm a Sussex boy myself, born in Surrey, but lost my accent within a week of coming to Australia, my mother reckons, because I was getting such a hard time because I talked funny. And now people like my accent. So there you go. You can you can't help bad luck sometimes. All right, what are we going to do today? Oh, I um, went over to my mate Theo's and we... Here we go. Look at that. How swish is that? Let's go there. There you go. We um, got these done on the CNC. That's for the music stand. There we go. So Theo very cleverly worked out how to do it. And the CNC I used was one sent to me from, I think they call the Inventables. Inventables. Yeah, I think it's the Inventables. Called a, an X-Carve. Uh, it's a top little machine. You've got to put it together yourself. And we have burned out a couple of routers on it. So the router they give you, even though it's a great machine, but for the price, you can throw a, a little trimmer on there excuse me, for an extra hundred bucks or so, and they work really well. I do have a video of um, us doing that, 
which I'll play later on. Not today, but uh, might do it later in the week. What I'd like to do today is cut these bits out here so we get a scallopy effect and also see if I can work out how to mount them onto the back of the music stands. So that's all these things are what I'd like to do. But who knows? What can happen with these? You never know. First thing I want to do though is here is, hang on, up. Oh, I'll give you a, a before and after. Before and after. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, crikey. Uh, these are the, for those of you who don't know, I promised my dearly beloved a new bed ages ago. Oh, it might be five years ago. And I have been building it bit by bit, but I've really got into it lately. These is going to be a big, huge four poster with pedestals, secret compartments. It's a super king size, so it's really big. And um, this is how it starts off. So I will prep this one for turning. And when it's turned, ugh, that's how it looks. But there are a slight imperfections in that you won't feel it with your hand. But if I put a straight edge on it, you can see maybe half a mil difference. And I, I really want to get it to be parallel. Hence the jig I want to make. Where are we up to? Oh, I've got to say good day everyone. Um, hey, HQ Sam from the Netherlands, how are you? Ads. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Um, well, that's good, Andrew. Is he aspiring to be a woodworker? How old is he? I started, I think I made my first box, which was a shoe box that my mum and dad had until they passed away. And actually, when we cleared dad's um, things out of the house, I couldn't find it or I would have kept it. And I would have been about 14, I suppose, when I made that. He's now eight. Great stuff. Start him young. Start him young, Andrew. Um, so I'll show you. Oh, look, we might cut this one first. Then I can show you how I start to um, get this circle. Because turning this plywood especially, and again, I do question the wisdom of using hide glue in this. So I used hide glue, as you can tell, here. Um... But I sort of think PVA, because of the way I'm going to do it, PVA would have been a better choice, not so brittle. But you can't, well, you can. You can turn it from this square if you like, but, oh, you're making a rod for your own back. So what I'm going to do is true off this face. This face looks fairly clean to me, so that's okay. So I'll true off this face and then cut one of these so it's square and then I'll knock off corners for the 45 on the table saw. I won't take you in to do the turning because the turning's in there and I haven't got camera leads that can go in that far. But it's a start. I will film it and put it up as a, a separate video. But what I want to do is make a sanding jig for this so I can get it parallel. Now, first of all, I thought about making a timber one, but as luck would have it, it is, hang on, I've got to cut this one up in a minute. It's the same size as 100 mil sewer pipe. And I've got a lot of that lying around the yard. So what I'm going to do is cut this in half, which I'll do over there, and we'll make a jig out of that. I uh, cut this one previously, but this is for something else. And you'll see that it fits over there quite nicely. This actually is for gluing down because what I'm going to do, I'm still um and ahhing on it, but I want to put, I don't want to put the veneer straight onto this. Where's some veneer? Hang on. I'll show you what I want to do. The effect that I want.
Ouch. This is going to be veneered in ebony and I want to do it at an angle so it'll be like a barber's pole if you can get that idea and then I'll put another strip on there and then another strip in the middle so it's all going to be nice ebony on an angle like that and then inside the ebony I'm going to do marquetry and inlay hummingbirds and I might put some <coughs> um, branches and leaves and flowers in there so the vine and leaves can go around in a circle with flowers and then the hummingbirds can be feeding on the flowers and what have you. So that's, so, that's a big job, I tell you. However, that ebony that I've got there is only about 0.6 of a mil, which isn't very big. Normal veneer I use is 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Doesn't sound much, but it's a big difference. And my concern is because this is laminated plywood, well, all plywood is laminated, but this I actually made myself out of different pieces of plywood, <coughs> as you can tell, glued it up there. Um, I'm concerned that the laminations will eventually over time show through the veneer. So what I'm going to do is wrap New Guinea rosewood veneer around here and then I'll put the ebony on top of the rosewood. Two reasons. One, that will take up any imperfections that come through from uh, the plywood. But also the veneer I'll be doing the birds in is 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Some of it is dyed veneer, which means it's been coloured artificially. And I found on a previous project, if I sand too deeply, I take the colour out of the veneer. So by having <clears throat> another layer of veneer underneath the ebony, it allows me to put the um, marquetry in deep enough that it won't require very much sanding. So, there you go. Huh. Uh, where do you buy your tools? Wherever I can get them. Um, but what you see behind me, there's over 30 years worth of collecting and buying. Um, and I have been fortunate enough to be given some, so that's nice. But it all depends what you're looking for, I guess. Um, I've bought a lot on eBay, a lot of old tools, and then I buy some online, some at uh, boot markets, some at markets, and, and some actually full price at retail outlets. As a beginner with hand tools, should I prioritise getting with a limited budget? It's just for some approaches for making small storage boxes for drawers for a desk. Swap meets, yeah, swap meets as well. Um, so yeah, you and I would get, depends, small boxes. Okay, number one thing you need is a block plane. Now, sit. I'll show you mine, but I'll show you one that you can use quite effectively. There's nothing wrong with them. Oh, that's mine, but um, that's, that's the Rolls Royce Lamborghini, I call that, because that's what it looks like. However, if you get one of these, and this is one I used for 20 plus years, and it still serves me well if I can find it or have I taken it up to the other shop. I might have taken it up to the other workshop. Um, it's a Stanley 060. Now, I think that it's up in my other workshop. But it's a... Um, yeah, you can pick them up online for about $50, $60. Stanley 060 or... No, I think it's the Stanley 060. There's another one, a nine and a quarter, but I think it's too big for box making. But box making, definitely get a block plane. And you want to get a good saw. Um, I like 
these for box making, wherever it is, because they're very easy to use. But again, depending if you've got a low budget, they're a little bit dearer. That's a Japanese saw with a replaceable blade. And the blades cost nearly as much as the saw. Get in there. But just an ordinary gent saw, a little dovetail saw, that'll get you out of trouble with, with most, th most things. And um, box making. I've got, I've got some boxes to do. We'll be doing box making soon, not today, but I've got 10 boxes I have to make for somebody, all identical. Oh. The joy. <laughs> uh, and, and a couple of good chisels. Get some really nice chisels. If you're doing box making, you would need a, you wouldn't need anything bigger than a quarter, uh, than a half inch. Maybe get yourself a half inch, quarter inch, and if you can, an eighth of an inch. And that should get you out of nearly all troubles. You could do dovetails with that, with that saw. Um, down the track, get a, and again, the other ones I've got are up the shop. But just get a little coping saw. Um, you can get a clip. Oh, hang on. There you go. That's, uh, again, that's a very expensive one. But these do just as good a job. It's just that's got a much finer blade on it. If you can have a look at the size of that blade and the size of that blade. Huge difference. But starting out, that's all I used when I started out, was an Eclipse one. I think I picked it up for $15 on eBay. All right, um, so let's go over and cut this. And this is all seat of my pants stuff. I haven't really, I've got a rough idea of what I want. But we will see if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm going over to the saw. I'll take you over to the saw with that one. See, all right there. It's not too bad. That focus is a bit ordinary on that one, isn't it? That's better. All right, so I've got a screw in here. These are originally, I had these as um, things for holding small bits of timber. Funnily enough, when I was making boxes. And um, I had them screwed up into a mezzanine floor that I had set up. So they were all different uh, species. So if I was doing solid edging on a box, I could just grab, you know, beech or walnut or jarrah or cedar or rosewood or whatever I wanted. Well, so I'll just take that screw out of there. Okay, Ugh. and where's a lump of rag? Let's poke this through here. This literally has been out in the yard for a couple of years, so it's got all sorts of dirt and muck and rubbish of it. Now, let me see if I can Sort of pick the centre of it. Actually, we might go where that one is. And that one is. And we'll go back over to the saw and cut that one. Up. Oh. Oh, that's, that's pretty. 
pretty well set up. You can tell it's pretty scungy on the inside, so I'll just clean that out. Where's my rag went to? Oh, ah. Hey, T Bone, how are ya? How's New Orleans today? Oh, yep, you and second-hand stores. And you'll find if, if you get something that's used by someone that knows how to do it, it'll work better. Don't ask me how, but I, it just does. Dennis, a big howdy to you too, and Robert. I'm guessing the old country's the old dart. Uh. All blighty. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people come around, they see my yard and they go, oh, it's a mess. Why don't you tidy it up? Why don't you throw half the rubbish away? Do you know how often there's something you need and it's out there? You just got to find it. All right. Okay, that's all right. I, it doesn't matter. I don't understand what I'm doing most of the time either. So don't feel alone. Hey, Randy, how are you? What's that, T-Bone? I'm good. How are you? Motograph season, full screen, New Orleans, praise, rolling. Oh, I was going to say, you're getting many gigs. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Rico, my, my wife just likes me to come down here because it gets, it gets me out of the house. <laughs> but it's fun. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. All I'm doing here is taking off that sharp edge. So I'm just putting a very slight arras on it because I don't know if you've ever worked with PVC before. But you can... I'd, I'd... Oh! Hang on, wait a minute. But yeah, I was going to finish the sentence then. Get me out of the house, but we can get things made. But any, oh yes, yes. You, if you use PVA, you can cut yourself. It's like a paper cut, it's pretty painful. I, I read that, Robin. I, I was sort of back at school. I thought, like, do I get detention because I used the bandsaw? You what? No, I don't bother about it. Um. Oh, actually, that uh, saw that I've got does have a quick release lever on it, but the um, bandsaw I had prior to that, I had for about 25 years, never took the tension off at once. The re oh, except for when you're changing the blade. The reason being, you take the tension off it, either you forget or somebody else will come around and use your bandsaw, and they won't put a tension on it, 
And of course, then the blade will crimp and it's cost you a new blade because it'll have a kink in it. Oh. Do you have an office work store up your way? If so, there is a pencil sharpener's all Oh, there you go. Yes, I do. I love office works. Max? Although, I must admit, there are times I've been in office work, especially, actually I did it last Thursday, um, with the uh, computer stuff, you go to office works and you see what they got, and then you use their Wi-Fi to shop them online, and I must admit, a lot of the times, if you say, look, I can get this online for this price, they'll match it, um, if not, it doesn't matter. Just buy it online. Now. That's what I did before. I'm not doing that twice. No, 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 the music stands here. These are the, these are the music stands. So this one, oh, that's two, so much thinner, much thinner. And for those of you who missed it, I was over at Theo's on Wednesday, and there you go. We now have those. Put in, which um, I will fill with resin and I think I'll use brass. I think brass resin would look nice in that. So that's down the track as well. Oh, and here he comes. Oh, well, hello. Did you get out of bed? Are you going to come around here and have a drink? I guarantee it. What are you doing? Are you going to... Did I pinch your spot? I'm sorry. You'll have to go over there. There you go. He's going over to a nice clean part of the shed. What is he? What's he doing? No. Oh, you know what this means? This means the next machine I'm going to use is going to be the bandsaw because Bob has decided to lie in front of it. He's uncanny, that dog. No matter what machine I want to use next, Bob will lie down in front of it. Won't you, darling? You're a good boy. I'm going to have to swatch that, switch that camera over. I think I don't like the way it's not focusing. Uh, yeah, they were done on a uh, CNC, so we cheated. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't mention your name, T Bone, in front of him, because in Australia. T-bone is a big steak, and he li he likes T-bone. I'm guessing, do you play a trombone? Is that where it comes from? I don't know. I'm surmising. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, the long the long sufferers of this channel will tell you that we started those. It would have to be a couple of years ago when Theo and I were doing joint streams and then I sort of lost interest in them and then I thought, well actually no, Anthony, my grandson, um, wanted to learn guitar so I thought, oh, I might finish the music stand off for him and then when he started doing that I picked up my Appalachian dulcimer which I haven't touched for ages and started to enjoy playing that so I thought, well, I'll keep that one for me and I might make him another one. Okay. Now. Oh. Horrible stuff. Actually, that's what I was reading before I went on. Oh, everything. Oh, man of many talents. Hang on, Max, I'll go over. I'll go over and give him a pat. 
Just for you. This is from Max. All right? Are you happy? This is from Max. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. There you go. All right. He's disappointed because I'm not having breakfast. I'll have that later. Okay. What I want to do is, as I said, have this on here. And I'll glue sandpaper on the inside, but I've got to put a handle on the top. So I thought initially I would just put a timber handle, like a, a, a bar, but I'm concerned it's going to pull through because I haven't got much thickness here. So what I thought, I'll cut another piece of this and then I can screw the timber onto this bit, then use that PVC uh, cement and glue this onto this bit and then screw underneath into the handle. So, with, and guess what? That's right, I've got to go over to the bandsaw. He's good, I tell you. Um, Oh dear. So, I don't know how much I want. Let me, first of all, I'll find a bit of timber I can use for a handle. Might have some floating around here somewhere. <whistles> Hang on, let's have a look out here. Do a boom, do a boom. Boom, boom. Oh, it's a waste, but might be able to use this bit. Oh, that's not too bad either. I don't know. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Da -da -da -dum 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 -dum. I think a bit of this would be better. So we might just rip a bit of that. How straight is it? Oh. Oh, I might rip a bit of that off on the table saw. Ah, fall over. Uh, the weather, I'm happy to say the weather has improved so I can get that blender bench, that's this one here, sprayed this week. And then I can put that together, which would be good. Mm, I reckon about... Oh, okay. Maybe I'll, yeah, that should do. All right. Just go over the table saw and we will cut that. So you can... Come over there with me if you want.
Don't run it. Won't be thick, I'll just run this over the jointer. You'll hear it, but you won't see me. Oh. Chuck it through the thickness of all on here. What you didn't see me, my joint is all clogged up. <laughs> Saw that flying ever. Should have done it with a hand plane. Um, actually, we might just do this one with a hand. Oh. No, that's all. Oh, we will. I'll just give this a quick, quick lick. There we go. Lot of boom. So those who have just joined us, a few jobs on today, but at the moment I'm just making a, um, a sanding jig so I can turn oh, all the bed posts down for the hummingbird bed and get them nice and parallel. Cut that down a bit on it. There you go. Beautiful. That will do me fine. Okay. Oh. So now I've got to get a piece of this, the thickness of this. And then we can cut that. On the bandsaw. So we go back over the bandsaw. Isn't that marvellous? This is exactly where his master's voice is sitting. You're going to have to move, Bob. There you go. You're right. Now you stay there. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll walk around you. It's all right. And where's he gone? Right in front of the saw table, which is what I want to use after I've done this one. He is a trick, I tell you. Okay. So this width here, I want to cut a bit of water pipe. But I really, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just, as I said, I'm winging this. We'll see how we go.
All right, so I want to glue this onto here. And then this should be the same radius as that. So glue this onto here, screw that in, and glue it, which is what I was reading before. And then glue that on there, and then countersink in here and screw into there. So this is going to be nice and firm on there. Oh, where are we? Hey Louise, how are you? Nice to have a break from the rain, isn't it? But this humidity can go away when it feels like it as well. What have we got? Uh, what exactly are you trying to make? Okay, I'll go back there. Um, this is going to have oh, very aggressive sandpaper. This is about 40 grit, I think. Is it? Yeah, 40 grit sandpaper. You can see how hard that is. And it's going to go inside here. And then I'm putting, that's what I'm making at the moment, a handle to go onto there. So when this is turning in the lathe and it's pretty close to being flat, I can then put this on here, which has got sandpaper in it, and move it up and down like that. And that will knock any inaccuracies out and make it parallel. So then when I put the veneer on, it's um, going to look nice and flat because if I, it's like anything, it's the prep work that makes the job. It's what you don't see people doing that makes it look good when you actually see it. Not that I'm saying what I'm doing is good, but it's just, you know, you put this much effort and time into making something. And if you start with a bad formula, it's never going to look good. It's like mathematics. If you get into doing mathematics and you believe two and two equal five, well, you're doomed from day one. Okay. Unless the entire world believes two and two are five, and then it's okay. Okay, so that's what I'm making. Ah. By Langshaw, g'day. Uh, use a long grooved handle rather than a pole like handle. Easier on the hands. Use it. Well, that's what I'm intending to do. Um, use the thinner paper. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. But there is a lot of uh, friction on this, and I need this wider base to hold it because it's going to be spinning on a lathe. And if I use a 19mm piece, it's going to bend and run the risk of tearing the screws out. But what I'm thinking of doing is um, I'll put a radius in here, the same radius as that, and then I might use a router if I've got, I'm not sure, if I've got a big core box bit, I'll run that down there so it'll be thinner, but my fingers can fit over it like a handrail. That's the theory. That's the theory. I think it's been three years from me. Yeah, I think you're right, Max. I think you're right. Uh, glue a T-shape in the wood to secure the screws with glue. Do it. Well, that, that's what I think I want. To, great minds think alike. Oh, dear. Hey, John, how are you? Only half an hour late. You're getting better, James. Or I'm starting earlier, I don't know. What's your act, Steve? I'm guessing blues guitar. Um, by your video intro. Now, actually, that, uh, that's a guy called Justin Johnson. Um, he was in Australia several years ago, and I met him at a blues concert and uh, asked him, I had a TV show at that stage, and asked him if he'd like to come on the TV show, which he did. And I looked the other day, that video that he's playing on my show's had nearly three quarters of a million views. So good on you. Thanks, Justin, if you're watching. Oh dear, oh dear. All right. And Nikki, your lovely wife. Now, what I've got to do first 
Yeah. Let me see if I've got a core box bit first. That's that'd be the the thing. I'll just go over here. Let me around the stand and have a look. Ba -boom. Oh, I've got that. Yeah, well, that might do. <laughs> Let's see. So I don't appear to have a big core box bit. What's that bit? That's about the same as that, so that's all right. Well, that's a pity. I'm sure I had a big one. But no, apparently not. It's most likely I could be in a, another... Oh, there we go. That's the one I was looking for. No, it's not all. Oh, what's that? It's about the same radius, isn't it? Oh, okay. So what to do, what to do, what to do. Okay, here's a core box bit. And there's a cove with the same radius. If I use the core, no, if I use the core box bit, I get a full finger depth, whereas if I use this, I'm just going to get, I think I'm better off using the core box bit, so I'll do that. But I think, I think, I think, I think, no, I think we'll do that, that first. All right. As I said in, in the preamble, this is a, a thinking stream, this one, I'm going to work, work stuff out as I go. Oh. But it's, it's all good, it'll all work out. Okay. If I put that there. All right. We'll go over to the router. The, the dreaded router. How big is that radius that I want? Okay, so we'll come up further here. We'll come up there to there. All right. So I love talking to myself, except for when I get into arguments with myself. <laughs> and that's not fun. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll do that and then we can do that. And then I thought, because um, I've got to get this radius here, I haven't got a router bit with a radius that big. So what I will do is I'll do it on the table saw, but we'll cut these ones first. Mustafa! Oh, there you go. Welcome. G'day, Ray. How are you? Um, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's a true guy. How it happened, there was two, two instruments he played. Um, one was a diddly bow. He said, you give me a box with a string and I'll play it. So I had a, a box that I messed up and I came home that night and put a stick in it and a bit of wire and that's the diddly bow he's playing. And then a mate of mine had just finished a cigar box guitar. And uh, Mr. W, if you're watching, and I said, mate, can you play that? Which he did. And he was gracious enough to sign it. So there you go. It was, it was good fun. Now, and he's a lovely bloke too, uh, Justin, I'm talking about. Mm. Oh, thanks, Max. Nice to have someone. <laughs> On my side. All right. Now you can give me you can give me grief about the router because I'm going over the router now. La da dum. There we go. Hokey dokey. I'll tell you what, time flies when I'm doing these things. It's, it really is quite nice. Okay. 
So I want that to be the inside. Boom, boom, boom. I don't think I've ever used this core box bit before. I might have. Oh yeah, I must have. It's got. I can see dust on it, so it must have been used at some stage or other. And Theo, if you're watching, here you go, mate. Theo's babysitting. And he can't get into the chat room a lot of times. But he does tell me he watches. Okay. Alright. What am I doing? I don't know. Help. Pretty darn close. Take it a tad further down. Yep, that'll do. And we're going to have to take a few passes at this because I want to go fairly deep. It's going to make a noise, so I'll put my put my eye muffs on. George, if you're watching, <laughs> love all enough. There you go, look at that. Uh, there we go, okay. Turn this one on. And we'll turn this one
I think we might even put a bit of a ramp over on that. We might do that as well. See, seems a lot of trouble to go to for just, nah, nah, won't do that all. I'll just use oh, a block plane. going to go out now, Bob. He's, he's worked out it's not safe to be in here. There you go, mate. Let's go. Okie dokie. Alright, so now I've got this handle here and I'll just oh, I'll just put a curve on it so it's a little bit nicer to hold oh. it's handy wonder what that is takes that sharpness off. Yeah, that's nice. And down this one. Yeah, you could use just an ordinary block plane for this, but seeing I've got these round and hollows, it doesn't hurt to use those. There you go. And that's a, an H&T Gordon 3-8. Hollow. Oh. Okay, so that's nice. Boom, 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 boom. Just notice, oh, I've just got a nub there. Wait a minute. Oh, look at that. Just, just got a little lump there. I'll just take that off. Oof. Nah, I might just tell you what we're, we're doing round and hollows, I'll, I'll use I'll use a round just to knock it off. Which way is it going that way? Just to show you don't always need power tools. Ah, got it. And that's the 
That's the mate to the one I just used, only that one's a round. You can see it's got a round sole on it. So you don't need power tools. You can use hand tools, it's good. Oh, where are we up to? Let me, let me, let me. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. There you go. I'm not saying anything, Ray. I'm not saying anything. Oh, that's good. Eh? That's good, Mustafa. Thank you. Hey, Lucas. Thank you for that. If you're wondering what these little saw blades are, they're actually um, membership to the Woodworking Masterclass channel if you want to help me out in any way, shape or form, that's what you can do. You can become a member, which I appreciate. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. I want to get my subscription numbers up too, which would be awfully good. And um, yeah, they start their different colors. So depending how long you've been with me, depends how many colors you get. Ray's got a golden red one, it's a year. So there we go. Max, oh, here we go, Ray. Put the medic. Oh no! I thought you were my friend, Max. <laughs> so thank you, Lucas. I appreciate your um your support. Thank you very much. Quick count. How many fingers? Look, like? got ten. Hey, Tango, how you going? Lovely to have you on board again. Hey, Reginald, welcome. Been watching your work for a year or so, and I've noticed you hardly ever use files. Do you find them unhelpful or do you rely on sandpaper? No, in all honesty, I um, use planes for most of it. I do have these if I'm doing, um, say, some luthery work and what have you. These, but they're not so much files, they're rasps. Where are we? There you go. That's a very fine one and that's a very coarse one. They're hand plucked. Um, this one I'm a bit disappointed in because it's got a big woof in the end, uh, but it's going to cost me more than the file cost to send it back. Um, but I got those, they're Dragon brand and I got those from Stumac. But as a rule, uh, if I'm not using files, I use card scrapers, which are these things here, which uh, if you saw me doing that mango bench top last week. Each of them have got a hook, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight edges that you can use, and they work much better than a file. I do use files when I'm up at the blacksmithing shop and when I'm in my mechanic shop, yes, I use files, but timber work, generally not. The main time I would use a file or a rasp is when I'm doing cabriole legs just to get that shape. But even that, I don't use a rasp. I use one of these, which is a bow sander. And um, they're easy to make. I did have the plans on my website. If you want a copy, just drop me an email at admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au and I'm happy to send you the profile of that. Uh, okay, now what are we up to? Um, make them talk cards. Uh, good man. Hey, there's nothing wrong with hand saw and chisel, T-Bone. Oh, thanks, Jared. Okay, let's go. So we've got this bit here. And I'm going to have to, I might have to cut that down a bit. But that, I can really get hold of that. It looks quite substantial. But as you can tell, it's flat, so it's going to wobble. So my idea is to glue this onto here and then screw this onto here. But again, you've got the same problem that that's only going to be sitting on the very edge. So what I've got to do is cut a cove in this to match that profile there. You know, I think there's Bob wants to come in. So we'll do that on the table saw. I haven't done this for ages. Oh no, it's not Bob coming in. He's, he's barking at someone. Oh, there you go. You come in when you're ready. 
So what we'll do, we'll go over to the table saw and do a cove cut using the table saw blade. Now, what I'm going to do, if you are new to woodwork, I suggest you don't do it. If you're familiar with what I'm doing, then you already know how to do it. It is perfectly safe, providing you know what you're doing. If not, it can be a little bit scary, so I'm not putting this out there for something for someone that is new to woodwork, keen to try, but it is terrific to have it in the back of your head so down the track you know that you can do it, especially if you've got to make a cove and you haven't got the, the right size router bit. So let's go over to the table saw and we'll cut a cove in the bottom of this to this radius. Um, you can go online, yeah, that's the other thing. You can go online, there's a lot of people showing you how to do it. And this is just my opinion, so I'm not saying anything other than it's my opinion. You have to do what you feel safe with. And remember, shop safety is your responsibility. Um, I think they go a little bit overboard with the way they set their saws up. So I do a very, very simple approach and it's worked for me, and it's all good. A late hello, you're not late. Paul, you're just, we're just settling in. I'm just going over to the saw to do a cut. Hang on, let me put that up. Oh, now, as I said, bear in mind, I haven't done one of these for a long time, so it could take a while for me to work out what I'm doing, but it's all good fun. Okay, now where's, did I bring that bit of, Thing over. Oh. What I've got to do is work out the depth I want for the radius, and that's the height that my saw is going to be. Now, depending on how big a curve you want, you might have to remove the writhing knife because I'm only doing a very, very shallow cut. I'm not going to have to do that. So I'm going to put that, so can we see what I'm doing there? Yeah, good. The top, the highest point of the tooth has to be at the highest point of that arc, which is about there. Um, actually, no. It has to be at the top because... This is going to be sitting inside that. I don't want the, outs the inside measurement, I want the outside measurement. And then this part here is going to stick on the other bit of pipe that I'm doing. Okay. Now I want to work out where that first tooth is going to cut. give me an idea. So I'm just putting a bit of tape over there so I know where it's going to start cutting. This one I'm doing isn't, doesn't have to be super, super precise, but I don't know if you can see that. I'll just take this off and take you over. Okay, that tooth is just touching that paper. So that's where it's going to finish its cut. Now I have to find out the other end where it's going to start its cut. But before I go there, this is a little jig I've got somewhere. Hang on, <laughs> let me see if I'll find it. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, I'm missing a wing nut. There you go. This little tre trapezoid. What are we doing? Get down. Oh, well, hello, Bobby, you're back in again. Okay. Jeez, I wish you'd learn to shut doors, I really do. A trapezoid, parallelogram, or whatever you want to call it. Actually, I'll go over to the main camera for this. So you can see. Okay, all it is, is four bits of timber, and I've got 
Oh. Wing nuts securing, so it does that. Um, I've lost a wing nut, which I'll have to find at some later stage. But they're easy to make. Just make sure that these two are the same size and these two are the same size and it's square. Now, I use this as a jig for setting up the saw to do the cut I want to do. So we'll go back, back over there. What do you want, Bob? So now, to find out how wide the timber is, all I do is put that in there. And then close it. And there we go. That's the thickness of what I want. So I'm going to tighten up at least the three wing nuts that I've got. Okay, I haven't got the third one. That's the thickness of the timber I'm cutting. So that is the radius of the arc that I want. So I now place that so this um, tooth that's coming down will just hit the edge and I tell you what, I think I'm going to have to take that writhing knife off. Oh, wouldn't that wreck you? That'd just wreck your day. Wait a minute. I'll just go back to where I was. Oh, and take this writhing knife off. I've got to say, this is one of the nicest things. I mean, this is just a beautiful saw to use, but that's how easy it is to take the knife off of these. Okay, so I'll wind it back down. Again, get the highest point of the saw to marry up with the highest point of the arc that I want, which is there. Lock that off. Get me a bit of tape. Find out where this tooth finishes cutting, which is pretty darn close to there. And then I move this so this tooth, when it finishes its cut, just touches the outside, the, the inside of this leg. And where it comes up, it just touches the inside of the other leg. And once I've got that, I can grab the miter box, turn it, and make it parallel to that if I can. No, I haven't got quite enough there. Okay. So. What I will do is I'm just trying, trying to figure out how I can get this on there. All right. Um, get a straight edge of timber. Hold it up against there. And I know what I'll use. I'll use a sliding bevel. So last time I did that, this, I didn't have this particular table. I had, um, a different saw. Okay, what I'll do is get rid of that and I'll use this sliding bevel to 
So that's the angle I want there. Now I can take that out. I can take that out. I can get my straight edge and bring it up at the same angle that I've got on the sliding bevel so it just contacts straight? Oh yeah, it's straight enough. It just contacts that bottom tooth as it finishes its cut. Now all things all things being equal. This should work. There's a couple of clamps. There we go. Stay there, Bob. Doesn't matter where you go, does it, mate? It just doesn't matter. When you're putting this clamp on, I don't know if you can see this, but make sure that it's on the outboard side of your fence. On the outboard side, because when you're pushing your timber through, you don't want it to be hitting a block or anything on the outboard side. Piece of tin that's all right, thickness above that. And there we go. There's another clamp. Now you will see other people and they'll put a fence on the other side as well. Quite frankly, I can't see the sense in it because the saw blade is pulling your job into this fence here. Now, if I... All right, let's go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> Who knows? Let's give it a go. Um, you only take very small cuts at a time. So I'm gonna wind that down and you only want to take about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. Let me just see how that's looking. Whoa, too much. Okay, and as you can see there, I'm starting to get a bit of a cove happening. It's a little bit one-sided, but I don't think I'll lose too much sleep over that. Okay, so... Move it up a little bit. I'm a bit fat on this side, so what I'm going to do is just turn it around and even that out. And if you look there, we're starting to get that profile. I've just got to go a bit deeper. I'll turn the dusty on. This is very, very messy.
I reckon that'll do, but I'll, I'll give it a, another just a little bit. Just to clean it up. That's it, easy peasy. Oh, that has to be crikey. That's got to be about 10 or 12 years since I've done that. So it's nice to know you don't forget things. All right, so here's the end result. So you've got a nice, oh, a nice cove and it's at the right radius for all intents and purposes. Try this end, might be cleaner. It's at the right radius for that bit of PVC pipe. So now what I can do is glue that on and screw it on, and then I can glue this onto the pipe. So there we go, we'll, we'll do that. Oh. Uh, de -de -de -de. I, Ray, I think this is an important thing. A lot of people go on about safety when using a table saw, but when I see them show how to use it, they have the blade up far too... Yeah, look, I, my um, thought is I just like the blade just above the thickness of the timber I'm using. And it is a definite no-no, and I know I did it a couple of times there. Do not put your hand over the blade. Have it up to there, then put this hand and pull it out. It's the same with a jointer. If you're using a jointer, so many times I see people, they stand here and they push down, and they feed it over the blade, and then the last little bit, their hand goes over. If that bit of timber flies out, your hand's going on the blade. The other thing is, by pushing on the infeed, you're not going to get a parallel piece of timber. The correct way, and they don't often say, this is the right way, but this is the right way to get a flat piece of timber. You start your cut off on a, a jointer. Once you're a couple of inches over, don't run your hand over like that. Take your hand, place it on the other side. If you have to, lick your fingers, and that will act as a, a, a friction for the timber, and pull it through. Because if your board isn't quite flat, and you're pushing down on the inboard, you're actually putting a taper on the timber. So do that and then pull it through. And if it's not cutting down here, that's because there's a bow in the board. It's not because of anything else. That's providing your joint is set up, I guess. Okay. Uh, one should only have enough blade to extend through. That is, that's, that's right, right. It's a good point. Uh. <laughs> that's not a legal trick. It's a legitimate, it's a legitimate way of making a curve. And if you want, that this gives you an asymmetrical curve. But if you want, now this gives you symmetrical curve. If you want asymmetrical, as in not symmetrical, and you've got a tilting table, if you tilt the blade, it will give you um, a sort of a comma shape, which is really interesting when you do on boxes. <clears throat> uh, Steve, where the best to get exotic veneer from and what best block plate on a budget so my husband can buy it for my birthday soon? Now, I've mentioned it before, I'll go up to the other shed and I'll get it for you. How very true, table saws are very scary, my fear is wood turning. Oh, well, you've come to the right place, Max. <laughs> Parabolic curve. Oh, Tango, you are a wealth of information. That's it. All right, hang on, I'll just go and get this um, cheaper block plate. I'm trying to think where mine is. It's, it's up in the shed. I'll just go up the wood turning shed. Wait a minute. Bob, you show them where you had your operation, all right? Stay there, you dumb dog. Oh. Oh, gee whiz, it's hot out here. Whew. You see the 
grass. Hey, ugh. Oh. <sighs> ah. Oh. Oh, that's handy. The microphone just fell out of my pocket. Why did it fall out of my pocket? I don't know. Let me just see if you're still getting the signal. One, two. Oh, there you go. That's all right. Oh. Because I've got a hole in my pocket. It, just, it fell from together. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get my microphone back into my pocket so I can take it out and put it in another pocket. There you go, that's better. I'll take that out of there because I don't need that. Oh, okay, this is the um, block plane I used for many, 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 many years. It, not that one, I don't know exactly where mine is, but that's what I've got my grandkids. Uh, it's an 060. Uh, I know Bunnings sell them but you can get them cheaper online as well. Number one thing to do is flatten the, the um, sole off. You can see that's nice and flat and shiny. That will take you a couple of hours with, with wet and dry and a piece of glass. But once that's done, you don't have to do it again. And uh, yeah, they're a great plane. It was just that I had the opportunity to opportunity to buy that NX60, wherever it's gone, I don't know. Um, and it was one I've been looking at, oh, this thing here. I've been one I've been looking at for years, and I've, oh, I love that. I know it's too dear, I can't afford it. And then somebody rang up and they, still expensive, got me a couple of dollars off it, so I thought, yes, I'll have it. And to this day, the guy who bought me this, Frank, if you're watching, his is still in a box, he's never used it. And it was really nice and shiny, but it's just, I was doing a, what was I doing? I was doing a box with Wenge, W-E-N-G-E, -E, or Wengi. And it is so tough. My normal little block plane that I just showed you couldn't handle it. And I took this out and I fell in love with it. The moment I used it. <clears throat> okay, T-Bone, all the best. Catch you next stream. Cheers. Uh, Steve, you're back. I like know, oh, mate. That. The, the record Coronet Herald, awesome, not scary at all. That thing I turned this on, yeah, that's a scary one. Anyway, what are we up to? Um, playing around with this, weren't we? Okay, all right, so now I wanted to see, has anyone noticed save me reading? I don't know what sort of glue to use. I've got this uh, tight bond. Epoxy light strength sands easily bonds almost anything solvent free. That's what I want. Um, tight bond polyurethane glue is a versatile professional strength glue specifically formulated for both interior and exterior applications. In addition to its superior wood to wood performance, it is ideal for metals, ceramics, most plastics, HPL. Corian, stone, and other porous, non-porous materials is ready to use. That's it. We'll use this. Uh, so, says he. What am I going to spread it with? Uh, what did I get those for? I made that for a reason. I, I love it when I make things, and I know I made it for a reason, but I can't remember. That has something to do with the music stand, I think. Okay, so we'll put this on here. 
and then we'll screw that onto that. We might drill the screw holes first. Where's my screw? New screw box. Here we go. On Judon. And where's my drill? Here we go again. All right. Okay. That can go on there like that. All righty. Do we do both services together or what? Coverage. One to two hours, application, temperature, such and such. Here we go, directions. Surface to be bonded, should be free of dirt, grease and anything. Nah, 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 nah. Apply glue to one of the surfaces to be joined using a brush, roller or spreader. Well, I actually bought a brush down here, but I most likely won't be able to find it. So, we'll use a spreader. Oh. Hang on, I'll just... Send this bit round. I'm just, just over here on the bobbin sander. I'll be with you in a tick. That'll do. That will do. What are you doing, Bob? You really do have the wonders today, don't you, mate? Go on, let's go. Oh, that was what I wanted to do too. That might be a different stream down the track. I uh, remember the old Spirograph things you can buy. You put your pen in there and you can make all these interesting little shapes when you're feeling artistically inclined. I have one for a router. Mm. Well, I don't, I don't think that's going to work because I think that I think it might have set. It's a bit disappointing. Oh. On that, no, just had a just had a crust on it. That was possibly my fault for not putting the top on properly. we go look at that so that's a handy thing to know if you've got some polyurethane glue and it you think it's set it um, might not be set <laughs> that's interesting this I thought this was a, a bit of MDF and I, when I smelt it I thought when I was sanding I thought well let's take this a bit hard to sand and they had a peculiar smell it's, Perspex or plexiglass. Anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Okay. So I'm just spreading this out. And what I'm going to do is most likely overkill, but I'm just going to put a bead right down the middle. So if there is any gap, that bead will fill it up. Okay. Now, 
it's gruesome. Holes in here. Are you back in? <laughs> you are lost, aren't you, me mate? Hey, you really are lost. You'll be right. You'll be right. Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah. We have something to eat in a minute. Later on, we're not finished. Okay. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to drill through here. And I'm hoping it's going to go. Oops. All the way in and that doesn't quite count to sink itself. Which is a bit of a pain. It means I'm gonna to have to pre-drill. Well that's alright. It's nothing we can't handle. Counter sink, which are these things here, I can just counter sink that in, and I'll show you what it. Whoops! I should put water in there, shouldn't I? Show you what a countersink does. Okay. Oh. If you look at this screw here, it's sitting proud. You can see if I put a pencil on it, it gets stuck there because it's sitting proud. This one's been countersunk. And so it doesn't sit proud. And I want it countersunk because I want to actually glue it onto another piece of PVC pipe. And if it's sitting up, it won't glue properly. This last bit. I tell you what, it's a lot of messing around, but it's something that is so necessary to get a good job. Uh, 
Now this is PVC gunk. Um, which doesn't smell the best, but it works. And what it actually does, it melts. Poor. The PVC. Yeah. Takes your breath away a bit. And you get a chemical type weld. Between the two. I'm going to put the top on or else I'm guaranteed to knock it over. Mm. Whoa. Rugged stuff. I know, I've said it before, you can tell when I'm concentrating, because I'm quiet. It doesn't happen often. You could have broken that bit for me, Bob. Oh. I do remember that I have two. Oh, there you go. We're back on. Well, anyway, I lost. I lost the, the plot, didn't I? Um, yeah, someone gave me one, and it's. It really is the precursor to a CNC machine. It has, it's very limited in some ways when you consider a CNC machine, but when you consider what it comprises of and what you can do, it's amazing. So we might have a play with that in a minute. <sighs> All right. Ouch. And and this is going on the job sheet of the bed. So <laughs> Just to keep everything above board. Because if you're making something and you have to make a jig in order for you to finish making whatever commission it is you're doing, well, I'm sorry, that's all part and parcel. That's like saying, I'm going to charge X, Y, Z to, um, you know, uh, go somewhere in the car. Well, to do that, you've got to go to the petrol station and 
get petrol and even though that might not be driving you to where you're going, it is a necessary part you have to do to fulfill that chore. So it should all be included. No tradesmen, if, you, if they've got to go to a place to pick up some parts, they'll charge you for that because it's all part of the job. So there you go, tight bond. Tight bond, polyurethane. I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't know what to do now. Oh, we might have a go at working on a bit of the music stand while that sets. Ow. Drink of water. Mm. I might even, <clears throat> I don't know, I might take that. No, I might, I might do a standalone video on cove cutting on the table saw because it, it's a great skill to have. And as I said, it opens up so many other possibilities you may otherwise not have. What I'll do, I think we'll just cut this up on the table saw and then we might do something on the music stand. So where are we up to? Twin electrical homographics. Well, there you go. Hmm. <laughs> that, that sounds a bit deep. All right, let's go over and rip this up. No. <laughs> Guess where Bob is? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Right at the table. So, hang on, let's go over there and I'll set this up and we'll do... This, get it ready for turning. Back in. See that? A little bit high. Look at that. Okay. With that bit of Tim McKay. You're right, Bob. I'm not going, I'm just going to face this basically. Let's take a little bit off. Oh, that's. Interesting. fingers.
And now I'm just going to cut mitres on it. And for that, wait until the blade stops. And flip it over to a miter. As it's not crucial that um, it's at 45 degrees, it's just nicer that way. I'm not going to do a big miter. I'm going to do it in small passes. So I'll most likely take two, two cuts. As Ray said, you don't want a heap of blade hanging out. Ideally, you have it almost like a um, hexagonal. I just take one more little pass. The more you can take off at this stage, the less you have to take off when you're um, turning. So that's it. Then when I go to the lathe, I'm not wasting my time and dulling my tools, taking these corners off. I've already got rid of the majority of them. The other thing it does, it reduces the chance of you ripping these laminations out. If you, um, if you get in there with a roughing gouge, there's a very good chance if you've got a square edge there, you're going to lift up these fibres and tear into your blank. Whereas doing it this way, 
all you've got to do is knock these little corners off and you'll end up with something like that. All right. Well, that's that part done. Let's do something else now. Oh. Hey, Al, thank you so much. Hard energy empty. I appreciate that. Another member of the Woodworking Masterclass YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Um, hey, from Portugal. Uh, hang on. Is that... Hola. Did I get it right? Is that hello? I think I remember that from last stream. Hey, welcome all the way from Nashville. Thanks uh, again. Th thanks, Al. Appreciate that. Ah, oh, right. Now, so this can all just sit there for a bit. I'll just wipe that excess glue out of that. Oh. Still a bit icky ticky. Although, what we can do, if that, oh no, we should be able to do that. If this is glued onto there, which it should be, I can put the screws in. Pretty close. I think we might put the screws in. Closer I can get to having this finished, the best. Voila! There you go! Pablo! Is that right? Oh! So I love the thing I love about streaming. It makes me remember stuff. Oh. Okay. So now, I've got that extra thickness of PVC underneath there, I can really screw that down, which I shall do right this minute. Oh. oh, where is it? You wouldn't believe the air conditioner's on. That can't be right. It says it's, it's not 31 degrees in here. I've got the Temperature says it's 21 degrees. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's always always a bit daunting when you've got new tools, isn't it? If you actually do trust them or not. Isn't it marvellous? You just managed to hit a screw that you did before. And as I said before, if you like what you see and you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and the notifications and you'll know when I'm on. This is a regular stream and then I sort of get around to doing two or three Irregular ones through the week. Okay. That's good. I'll put this on the same way as your tension ahead in a car which is start at the middle. I <laughs> just spun the head off of that one. Start in the middle and work your way out. Yeah. 
this one here I broke so we'll just have to drill another hole yeah look we were lucky um, Pablo we, we didn't get any of the fires at all we definitely saw the smoke um, but we were blessed we didn't get any of the bad stuff so we were safe <coughs> um, I'm, I'm looking forward to and also concerned about when I go out west next time to get timber I'm sure it's going to be pretty horrendous out there okay now I'll dock this off on the saw be a tick. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. As I explained before, and you can do, if you're going to make rolling pins and you want to make a lot of them, um, you can do the same thing only on a smaller scale. So this sits in the lathe. I've got to put sandpaper in there. And then as it's spinning, I put this down on top and move from side to side. And it'll take out any imperfections and it'll give me a beautiful parallel cylinder, which is what I'm after. So let's just see if we're on a roll. On a roll. And he pulls out sandpaper roll. Oh dear. It's sad when you amuse yourself like that. Okay. And we'll go a little bit oversized. <sighs> and how wide I want it, the best way is to get a piece of paper, put it in there. And then crease it, and that'll give me how wide I want, which is pretty close. What I might do actually, I think I'll take that all the way across because, oops.
I actually wanted to poke out a little bit on both sides. You're right, mate. Let's go and sharpen my pencil. There you go, Max. That wasn't an office work pencil sharpened them close to it. You want to go out, mate? Come on. Let's go. He has got the wonders today, like I wouldn't believe. Okay, so. I'm going to draw a line along there. No, sorry, I was thinking of someone else. I'll call you PT. It's okay. I, I apologise. I got you confused with someone else. All right, now, what I want to do is I'm going to... I'm not sure if this stuff's still good. I um, put some out last night and to see if it would still stick. And, oh, yeah, it's sticking all right. Normally, I'd use... Um, I don't know if I've got any here. Contact cement, but the spirit form. But I don't have any. I've got some water-based stuff, which I'm hoping is going to do the same job. But I'm just looking for a paintbrush of some sort. Wait on, I'll just go up to the other shed and grab some paintbrushes. Oh! I just stuck a grinder in me back then, if you wonder what that noise was. I'll be back in a tick. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. <clears throat> These are really cheap, so I can afford to throw them away because once I use it on this stuff, it's no good for anything. This is uh, water-based contact cement. Sally's product, really, really nice. And you can just wash things out in water when you're finished. My concern with this, and I won't know until I actually use it, is that there's a fair amount of heat generated from the uh, sanding and I just hope it doesn't loosen the glue so much that the paper slips off. But we won't know until we actually try it, so what can I tell you? Oh. Then the two pencil marks I drew I'm just going to put the glue between them. I 
But as I said, with this, you can, anything you're making, if you're going to make more than one, it, you know, it's worth your while spending the time to make one of these sanding jigs up. Because then, it's been my experience, if you make something down the track, someone else will want one, and then you've got to go through all this procedure again, whereas if you make these jigs, you're in front. thing with the paper, uh, sorry the paper, the water based contact is it does take a lot longer to tack off. So with um, the spirit based stuff it can tack off in you know 10-15 minutes. This sometimes takes in half an hour, an hour or maybe a couple of hours so we'll just put this, actually I might put it out here, that way hopefully it's not going to get too much gunk on it. There you go, it'll just sit there like that. Oh, and this one can sit here over here. And I'll put these away. And we might do something on the music stand, what do you reckon? What? Boy! It's funny, you know, when, I, when I'm sitting down having a coffee, which I do from time to time, I think of all the things that I want to do, and in my mind, they don't take long, but in reality, I mean, that's what? Two and a half hours, we'll say two hours, to make that jig. Whereas I thought, oh, maybe an hour hour and a half tops. Okay. All right. Music stand. Let's make these little scallops. That looks quite nice like that. But I promised Theo I'd, I'd put scallops in it. So scallops I shall do. Oh, I'm trying to think of Something I could do. Ba -da 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 -da. Give us a bit of, bit of scrap. Ooh. Too big, too thick, too thin. That'll do. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay. Gee, that was a lucky guess, wasn't it? I don't know, but wouldn't it? I really wanted the same thickness, I suppose, as the rest of the sand. So let's. See, where'd my verniers go? It's all right, I've got a spare pair out here. I hope, I think. Oh, here we go. They're not, not me good ones, but they'll do.
So, well, it doesn't matter. It's 50 mil if you're interested, but it really doesn't matter what it is. What I want is that same thickness. What is it with I sharpen pencils and then I pick up a blunt one? Oh, no. There we go. And there. Okay. So that's got to go to there. This one goes to there. So what I've got to do, never argue with a like, no. And never, and never pretend you can do it again either. Okay. Sharpen your compass. See? It's a cheap, cheap way of sharpening your compass lead. Bit of sandpaper, works marvellous. Okay, so what I want is from this corner here, from this corner here to this corner here, but only that depth deep. We're getting there. Getting there. From that corner to that corner. That's it, but I've got to move back a smidgen to there. Yeah! Oh, I see the boss is here, but I'm not in trouble. Going to the laundromat. Are you going to come and say hello? Oh, okay. Sure. So look, it comes alive already. Ray's on to get a suit. Hi, Ray. Hello. How are you? Oh, hang on. Let's go. Let's go. He's saying, <laughs> "See my lovely wife." Should we grow some now? Mm. Nah, you'll grow. One hundred and thirty <laughs> years worth of lip smacking there. Here you go. Good. Are you good? Yeah. No, I just thought, I just finished that quilt for you. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Susie's, Susie's just done another quilt. She, oh, she just finished a massive one. How big was that massive one? It was for a king size bed. It was. Not ours, I might add. No, no. She hasn't no. finished the one for ours yet. But I'm getting it. Um, <laughs> so it's a bed. <laughs> it was, yeah, 106 inches wide by 116 inches long. In centimetres, I don't know. There you go. That's that's, right. that's going to be. Oh, that was going to be close enough. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I just thought I'd go in and do this raggy one. See how yeah. it's Actually, I've got two raggy ones to do. So we'll you might as well. Go. You want to put Bob's blanket in? No. No. No, not with the quilts. Didn't oh they, well, I can if you want. Didn't I have a dog wash? Yeah. Machine. Ah, oh, no, be right. Bob doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. Bob's a grub. Who else we got? Oh, Tango Delta says, hi, Sue. I think we can give Sue some leeway, Steve, on me. That is just, uh, just back off. I'm, where are you up? Have you worked on the quilt today? I've worked on the bed not, today. Well, not on that particular one, but I've worked on two others. Yeah, but no, for, for our bed. No, but I'll tell you what, I can if you want. Well, that'd be all right, but but and then but, I'll come down and I'll no, no, show everybody. No, no, there's no I need finish, to do. That. I can finish mine before you can finish. I them. bet you can't. Bet you I bloody can. Oh wow! Oh, oh, you stand in the naughty girl corner. Yeah, I reckon. Sorry Ooh. about that. Bet you I can. No, I bet you she can't. 
Because I'll turn the power off to a sewing room. <laughs> yeah. But no, are you going to go with the original one that you were going to do? The yes. um, Japanese style yes. one? Yes. It's beautiful. It's black and pink with flowers and Japanese, all that Japanese stuff. Well, I've finished my, nearly finished the sanding. Jig was taking me longer. It's two hours, so that's going on the cost of the bed. It's another. I don't think I can afford the bed. No, you can't. It's going to come in around 30 grand, I reckon, at least. A labour of love. Well, there's a heap of labour involved. I <laughs> <laughs> don't have much love attached to it, but anyway. So, no. Well, my back's killing me, as it was last night, but I'll go in there. I can sit down in the laundromat. Oh, if you're just going to sit down, I can go and do that job. I, I can sit in the laundromat. Okay, if you want. No. I prefer, prefer to sit down in the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm you going to take Ants or are you just going to... No, if he wants to come, he can come. Okay. He can, not, he can just chill out. But he's just come off a of scout camp. This is our grandson. Um, and he's living with us. And he's 15 and he's absolutely... Tired. Yes. Isn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely Bryce is morning. Oh no. Oh, there you go. <laughs> morning on nearly Mr. Lovely. <laughs> Some of us cuddles and get. Yeah. Mate, I'll tell you what, I like doing it because the only one I'm allowed to do it with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's, that's my granddaughter comes around. Yeah. But and yes, Brian, um, at some stage I will bring down some of the quilts. And yeah, show we'll, you what put, I do. we'll put the one on the bed that I'm making. <laughs> no, it's coming along, aren't you? It is. It is. You're happy with it. Yes. All right, good. Um, happy. Oh, it's nice to have a happy wife. You can tell I'm smiling. What is it? Wasn't happy wife. Happy no. life, that's it. Bye, everyone. All right. Um, if chocolate's on special. If chocolate's on special, I shall buy me some. Yeah, but I can help you eat it, eh? How can you now? Um, actually, Woolies had peppermint dark oh, chocolate. Oh, no, good. three bucks, I think. Oh, okay. And Coles might have had it too. I'll have a look. All right. No worries, love you. Take it easy, shut the gate. Yes. Okay. I will, I'll be finishing up soon and I'll go and have me breakfast, I promise. Oh, talk about being hounded. Anyway. As... <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Brian, why are you related to Ray? Fair dinkum. Hang on. All right. I'm going over and I'm just going to cut those on the bandsaw. I don't know how I'm going to go because I've got a wide bandsaw. But we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go and then I'll go over to the bobbin sander and we'll clean it up on the bobbin sander. G'day, Derek. I started about 10 past nine. You can fairly guarantee I'll, I'll stream on this day, anywhere from nine to half past nine. So lovely to have you with us, Derek, and in answer to your other question, when is Theo and I doing a joint stream? I don't know. Um, did I, yeah, I went to Theo's the other day. That's where we did these, for those of you who missed it. Look at that. See, we've got the, the double clefts. No, they're not the double cleft, the triple cleft. G Clef. They were um, done on the CNC, which I'll put that video up of it actually being done shortly, but I'll just go over to the scro scroll saw. I could do it on a scroll saw, I suppose. But I meant band saw. I know what I meant. Oh, dear, oh dear. So I'll freehand this and we'll see how we go. I would prefer a thinner blade. But beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. There we go. Oh, no, I might be all right. I'll make sure I stay fat of the line. That way. I can't get into too much strife.
Okay, I see that looks nicer, doesn't it? I'll just, I'll just show you the before and after. See, that's, that's the after and that's the before. Just, it's nice. Oh, get back over there, get back over and do the other one now. See if I can do two in a row. those sparks is because I'm going too close to the edge and I'm actually bending the blade. It's a, a one inch tungsten tip and it doesn't like being bent. Oh, I could have done without that, but anyway. Okay, now we'll go with the bob and sander. Wherever it is. Whoop, there it is. And I'll find the cleaning stick, which is over the other side. We'll just shape those. Oh. Believe it or not, I have actually I did the shed up a bit. The biggest problem was I um, was cutting some bowl blanks out for wood turning and that was making the mess in the shed. But now I've set up a new, which I'll take up there one day, a new um, band sawing shed. Where, no, well, oh, for goodness sake, dog. Mum's gone out, so you've got to come down and see me, do you? Come on, then you come. And it's great because I can make a mess and it's outside. All right, so here we go. That little slip of the bands, or it's just little, little nick. That's got that one. Let's do this one. And Theo gets the nice one, I get the square one. Okay, for those of you who don't know that rubber stick I'm doing, all it is is rubber, but with friction, it actually melts and then picks up all the sawdust inside the grit and cleans it so I get a much better cutting action. And that's pretty darn good. <whistles> and you can see just how, just a little thing makes such a difference. That goes from being plain to it's, you know, quite nice with an extra little detail on it, if you like. And this is the square one. And between the two, I like this one. But anyway, 
It doesn't matter. It's one of those things. <clears throat> oh, who have we got? Um, but do do do. Well, that's because I'm too big to fit on the phone, Derek. I'm larger than life. No, not really. Um, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll show you this little thing. I've got, well, I could use a chisel, but I've got these little bits here. They actually go into the slot a little bit. And I was going to show you something, but I've just realised it won't work. So I won't show you. I'll just use a chisel instead. Oh dear, these need to be sharpened as well. Mm. I'm just taking that off there and cleaning that out. And the same with this side. Now what that allows is oh, for this then, just sitting there like that. Haven't worked out what I'm doing with this one yet. I might um, put it actually on the bottom to be different. And what I'm thinking, I haven't got time to do it now because I'm starting to, I'm starting to wane a bit. Um, I might put dovetails in there or bow ties to hold that in because if you can remember, I put mortise and tenon joints in here and in here and here, but these were butt joints and I did say when I did them, they're a weak joint. If I was to drop this on the ground, it could possibly break there. Uh, even though I'm using tight bond original, which they tell me is stronger than the timber, I don't know. So what I might do is put bow ties in there and uh, I'll actually stream that. I don't know if I'll stream all four of them, but I'll stream them and show you how to put bow ties in. The moment I'm thinking, do I want to do it in ebony, which is a bit of a contrast? I'm thinking I might do it in Jarrah or I could do it in Coachwood. So anyway, that's something to think of down the track. And you'll notice as well, I haven't sanded this off flat. So it's still uh, got a little bit over the top there where the mortise and tenons are and these glue joints are a little bit proud as well, top and bottom. But I'm not gonna finish it until I've got everything in, then I'll finish it nice and flat. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing. There's, I mean, look, there's so many things you can do with butt joints. I'm really pushing the envelope, and I'm sure it's been done before, but I try and make it a practice not to watch what other people do because I find that stifles my creativity. It's not a question of me being a know-all or a big head. It's more a question of, I want to know how I would do it so I understand. Whereas if I see someone doing it on YouTube or a practical demonstration, or I go and ask somebody, they will show me how they did it, but I won't get the history of how they arrived at that way of doing it. Whereas with myself, for example, those of you that watched when we did the cove on the saw, um, you know, there's so people get so complicated with it. Whereas I've worked out my way of doing it, it might not be your way of doing it, and that is perfectly okay. You've got to work out what works best for you, but I like to find out what works for me. As a matter of fact, I've got down the track within. Well, within the week, I think, I've got a, um, um, a pressure pot. Actually, I've got it here. No, stay there, Bob. You don't have to move. Oh. Oh, I've just taken the hoses off, but I'll have the hoses and everything on, and I'm going to convert this pressure pot, which is made for paint, into a pressure pot for using, for casting resin and epoxies. And <coughs> I saw someone doing it uh, and I thought, oh, that's got to be done. And when I actually went and bought this pressure pot, I remember what I saw and I looked at the pressure pot and I thought, well, why would you do that? And 
this person uh, just made a production out of it. And it wasn't that hard, but they just did so much extra work. Whereas I looked at them and said, no, I need that, need that. That doesn't work. Change that. Put that in there. So anyway, that will be a stream later on the week of converting a pressure pot into a pot for doing castings, which I hope you can join me for. I'll just see if this has gone tacky at all. If it has, we can... No, nah, that hasn't quite gone off. Um, that contact cement's still too wet or else I would put that sandpaper in. But I'll show you that finished article when it's finished. And I'll do a video. So I don't think any of these cameras will actually go into my machinery shop next door. So you can watch me on the lathe. It's not the record lathe. The record lathe I've got is in the wood turning shed. And it's brilliant. I love it because it's, it's wonderful to use. But this is a much bigger lathe. It's got a 1.8 metre bed and it's a clunker. It is, I don't, I'm with you, Max. I don't like using this one. It's not variable speed. And it just, it's got a mind of its own, but it's the only thing I've got that I can do the big bed post cylinders on. So we'll do that. Um, yeah, look, Tango, what you were saying, oh, let me, I'll get down to Tango in a second, but, um, uh, do -do 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 -do. yeah, oh, look, I could have done it with a, a scroll saw and a, a scroll saw. I could have done it with a coping saw and a, a spoke show for sure. But I got the bob and sander there, so might as well use it. Um, how do you head spin? What? Head spin. I mean fat fingers. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, yeah, I, I, was just <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, fat fingers. Although, although. Um, people got fatter fingers than me and do more delicate work than I do, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, look, I could put notes. I, I might even think about that, Tango. But what I was thinking with that, if I don't do bow ties, I mean, bow ties are good. Actually, what I might do, tell you what I will do. I'll do bow ties on the back and then I'll do notes on the front because the thought I had was if I can route out the notes, and then fill them with epoxy, that is going to be just as good a joint as inlaying it with timber. So, yeah, we might do that. I might, um, this is going to be inlaid with brass. So I might look at um, maybe a crotchet or something or a semi-quaver. See, I know the words. Um, and then we can tie that together, which it'll look good, and then we'll put brass in that. Good thought there, Tanga. Yeah, good thought. Um, yeah, look, I could, but honestly, there's no, no real point. Uh, it's not going to come out. It's going to stay on there. But yes, you could do a slide and dovetail there, if you so desired. But no, nah, I'm just going to use a butt joint. Sliding dovetails in bookcases. There's a cabinet out there that I want to finish. Yep, that's got sliding dovetails, so that's all good. So that's about it. We did, did we do anything? Yeah, I did. I did do something on the music stand, so I wasn't telling you lies. The router spirograph thing we'll touch on later in the week. So that's at least two streams I'll do in the week. One is converting the pressure pot into a pressure pot for casting. And I'll also, I'll see if I can find, I'll see if I can just find a bit I did the other day, which will... Maybe wet your appetite, but if I can find the blinking thing. Where, 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 where? Oh, here it is. Stay there, Bob. You're right. Whoops. Oh. No, where did I put it? I, I had one, but I did. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Mm. There's just a myriad of designs you can do. Uh, you can tell there I missed a couple of bits because I tried to do it without picking the router up. But uh, we'll do that later in the week. And what I want to do is do a design in that through veneer. So if I can get the timber uh, veneered up in time, we might even do that one. 
and put it into a bowl and then put copper resin in the design in the bottom of the bowl and apart from everyone watching the stream, I don't think people will figure out how I did it. Pretty tricky stuff. And for those of you just that were watching me last week when I was gluing those little strips together, this is what it ended up looking like. Turned into a little box. And then on the top you've got the squares. And then on the inside there's, where are we? There we go. Squares and squares. So it's just fun playing around with different concepts. I'm trying to do one with triangles at the moment, so I'll let you know how that goes. But in the meantime, that's it. My voice is starting to go and I'm getting hungry and my dog needs to be fed as well because he has breakfast with me. <laughs> so thank you one and all for joining in. The, the people that joined the Woodworking Masterclass family, thank you so much. Um, for becoming a member. I appreciate that greatly. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and hit notifications. But apparently, Derek, notifications don't always work. So always check me out this time on a Monday, a Sunday night or a Monday morning because I'm fairly confident I will be streaming. By all means, drop me an email if you like at admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au or leave me a message on YouTube if you so desire. Any questions you have, happy to ask. And that just about wraps up. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks, right? Thank you, Cape Six. Uh, Louise, if you start with resin, I strongly suggest A1 Pigments Australia. They are awesome colours. They have sham, what's it? Chameleon pigments. Oh, there you go, the pigments. I've got actually the lovely people at Barnes who supplied me with some. I don't know what they're called, but I will show you when I get together. Use notes to tie the joint together. Done that one. Came down to that. Thank you. Interesting. So thanks, James. Thanks, Brian. All right, that's it. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying thanks to all the mediators. Thanks to all the members. Thanks to all the subscribers. Thanks for all the lurkers. Thanks for everyone that's joined in. And it's me pulling the shed door down and saying remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Work to your own tolerances. Be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in one of the workshops at a workbench very, very soon. Till then, may you God bless you and look after you, take care of yourselves, and I wish you all well. Bye for now. See you, Louise!